A few weeks ago, some friends invited me out to a track day at Chuck Walla. I've had the S600 running with its motorcycle engine for several years now, but I've never taken it to an actual racetrack, which is odd since it's more race car than road car. I usually just enjoy taking it out to the canyons and the occasional car meet, but I thought this would be a great chance to really see what it's got, to see what it can take, and what it can't take, and I found out what it can't take. Chuckwalla is a great track, lots of good corners, a long straight, some off-camber stuff, a bowl. I don't really like taking the S600 above 100 miles per hour because the wheelbase is short and the crash protection is minimal, but there's really only a couple of short bits of triple digit speeds for this car at Chuckwalla, so I went out there and I sent it. I love this car, it feels like a really big go-kart. I was getting some pretty good times and bringing them down steadily as I learned the track. After a few sessions, my time stopped improving and started unimproving. The engine temperature was higher than usual, so I pulled back into the pits and noticed the oil light was on, which is usually not a good thing. I filled the oil before I left. There wasn't any leaking oil, and it didn't appear to be burning any oil on track. Unfortunately, the sight glass for the oil level in this car is hidden in the back where you can't see it, covered by some random tubes. Most people would pack it up at this point, but here's the deal. I don't love this engine. It has been a reliable power plant for several years, but the hydraulic clutch sucks, and it has a bit less power than it probably should have. I wouldn't say that I was looking for an excuse to swap in a newer engine, but I definitely wouldn't be shedding any tears if it were to, say, stop working. Also, after cooling off for a bit, I started it back up and the oil light was not on, so maybe it just fixed itself? I took it back out and foot to the floor, realized I was definitely making less horsepower. I pulled off the track and drove back to the pits where it began making a somewhat odd noise. I don't know if you can hear this or not, it's subtle, but it seems like there may be a slight ticking noise. At this point, it was clear that I was running the risk of blasting the engine out the bottom of the oil pan and painting the track with a blended smoothie of sharp metal and oil. This would not be ideal for everybody else on track, so I loaded it up and called it a day. These engines make somewhere near 80 PSI of oil pressure. The oil pressure light doesn't turn on when you're at 70 or 60 PSI, it turns on at something like 3. The oil light doesn't mean you have low oil pressure, it means you have no oil pressure. Pressure is lower at idle, but it's always supposed to be much higher than the warning light pressure. When I went back out for the last lap, the light wasn't on, but that was probably because the oil had cooled down and was just thick enough for the pump to pressurize it up to 5 or so PSI, enough to turn the light off. So what happened? Why did I have no oil pressure? And what was that god-awful noise? Let's dive into the engine and find out. The first step is to remove the engine, which was actually pretty easy. I don't have an engine hoist, so I just sort of reinforced one of the ceiling beams in the garage and used a chain hoist. Admittedly, this was slightly sketchy, but I did run some hand calculations of the strength of the beam, so it is technically an engineering solution. Once I had the engine out, I realized that I hadn't drained the oil, so I decided to continue my sketchy problem solving by kind of hanging the oil pan off the edge of the toolbox. I know it looks super messy, but this actually worked pretty well. After I took the oil pan off, I set it outside on a piece of cardboard. A bit of oil drained out along with glitter. There's glitter in my engine. This glitter looks like it used to be a connecting rod bearing. This is the oil pump. As it rotates, this area gets bigger, sucking in oil. Then this area gets smaller over here and pushes that oil into the oil passageways that lubricate the bearings and the engine. This pump appears to have some damage on it. The points of the middle part look like they've been hammered on, like something more solid than oil was smashed up by this pump. It's probably not supposed to look like that. I'm guessing that has something to do with the glitter. Let's dig deeper. Getting to the crankshaft requires removing pretty much everything, the water pump, the clutch, about 800 random bolts. So I'm just going to speed through this bit a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit. Whoa, whoa, too fast. Back it up. All right, so the bearings on these engines are not roller or ball bearings. They're just these soft metal bearings, and they require pressurized oil to work. So if you don't have oil pressure for any amount of time, it'll usually destroy the bearings and often the surface they're riding on. Interestingly, this car originally came with roller bearings on the crank in 1964. Looking at the main bearings on this, they're actually not that bad. The crankshaft has some marks on it, but I think it probably would work fine like this. The connecting rod bearings, however, are not great. They have a lot of wear, and they look like they've already been partly squished out the sides. This is probably where the glitter came from. 
This connecting rod is the worst. Both of the bearing halves are on one side. This is what you call a spun bearing. Both halves are trying to occupy the same space at the same time, which is a clear violation of the law. You could probably replace the bearings and reuse this crankshaft, but I wouldn't. Let's check the pistons. You can see the pistons have been pretty wrecked. There's lots of scoring on the side. Not as much as I expected, but there definitely is damage there. The cylinder walls are also damaged, but also less than I was expecting. They line these cylinders with a hardened coating, and if you wear through it, it needs to be recoated. I can feel ridges with my fingernail, so it's not good. The head looks fine. Again, surprising that it was basically running without oil at wide open throttle. I'm always impressed with the abuse that Honda engines can take. You could probably make this engine run again with new bearings and a new oil pump, although I wouldn't put it back together without fixing the cylinder lining, and you probably want to swap out the pistons and the crankshaft. Or you could just replace it with a newer, better, more powerful engine for probably less money. Well, here's my guess. You see how I'm going around this corner? And I'm still going around this corner? Still going around this corner? Then immediately into another corner that I'm still going around. Inside a car engine, the oil will slosh to the side like this, and then to the other side like this. All the while, the oil pump is sucking up oil from this spot right here and spreading it around the engine. Car engines are designed to go around corners and still have a functioning oil system. When a motorcycle goes around a corner like this, the oil doesn't slosh at all because the motorcycle is leaning, which means the motorcycle engine is leaning, so the oil system works fine. But if you put that motorcycle engine in a car, the new oil is now sloshing to the side, and the engines are not designed to do this. I also made this worse by shortening my oil pan. Most of the time it works fine. In fact, all of the time up until now, it had not been a problem. I added a baffle between the engine and the oil pan to help keep the oil from sloshing away too quickly. This worked great for those short canyon corners and the trips to the cars and coffee, but not so great with all this sustained lateral acceleration. So what probably happened during all these long corners, the oil sloshed away from the pickup, starving the engine of oil. This caused excessive wear on the bearings. Without oil between the bearings and the crankshaft, there's too much friction and the bearings start to break apart into small pieces. These pieces find their way down into the oil pan and are sucked up into the oil pump. Normally the oil pump has a screen on the pickup to keep pieces like this from getting into the pump, but I cut that off when I shortened the oil pan. I could have wrapped a new screen around the pickup, but I didn't because I like to live dangerously. So the oil pump sucked up those chunks of metal and smashed them together between the parts of the pump. This damaged the pump, leaving a passage from the high pressure side back to the low pressure side. So instead of positively displacing the oil into the engine, it just sort of suggested that the oil might want to go this way maybe? Now the oil pump isn't pumping and the oil is getting sloshed away from the pickup, so some of the time the engine is not getting very good oil pressure and the rest of the time it's not getting any oil pressure. The result of this is further wear on the connecting rod bearings, causing them to get so thin that they spin around on top of each other. Now there is a gap between the connecting rod and the crankshaft and every time the engine rotates it slaps around and makes that awful noise we heard earlier. Now, I know what you're saying. Matt, it seems like you should have seen this coming. And yes, I did expect this might be an issue, but I thought it's probably fine. I raced cars in college that were motorcycle powered and we never had an issue there, except that one time an engine exploded, but mostly it was fine. And yes, I probably should have put an actual oil pressure sensor on the car that turns a light on at 50 PSI, and I should have put it right in front of my face instead of behind a phone. Probably should have logged oil pressure and taken a look at it after the first lap. And perhaps I will do this on the next engine. There are a few solutions to this problem. One is to just get an oil accumulator like an AccuSump. This sort of pressurizes while you drive around and then once you lose oil pressure, it'll just push oil back into the engine, maintaining some oil pressure when you go around these long corners. I can also do a dry sump. This is a system that picks up oil from all of the corners of the pan and puts it in some sort of accumulator. So if you're sloshing it all to one side, it doesn't really matter because there's a pickup over there and that pickup can pull the oil into an accumulator and then the main oil pump pulls oil from that accumulator. I actually bought some extra oil pumps for this motorcycle engine and I'm gonna cut them up and see if I can make my own dry sump system inside the engine. This sounds somewhat difficult and it might be more work than it's worth. I might just go ahead and buy the oil accumulator and stick it on there and then actually log oil pressure while driving around in circles and see what happens. 
This is definitely the easiest way to fix this, but I do like the idea of making my own dry sump system. Sounds pretty fun, but I do have enough projects already, so maybe this one goes on the back burner. Tune in next week to find out. You're still here? It's over. Go home. I mean, first hit that like button and subscribe and hit the bell, but then go home. Go.